Hi, I'm John. And I'm also John. Today, we are going to have a good old fashioned build off. I recently spent two and a half months building, filming, and editing a video about making these reasonably elaborate chairs. And despite all of that effort, the overwhelming majority of the comments were about how awesome this guy was, even though he was only in the last 10 seconds of the video. It doesn't totally suck. Call it redemption, call it stupidity, but I felt like the only way to make myself feel better was with a friendly competition. And the rules are simple. It must be a table of sorts, feature a pattern, be something we've never done before, and most importantly, each person only has two days to build it using only their shops. Speaking of, we should probably show them your setup. I think that's a good idea. You all will be voting at the end of the video to pick a winner, and here are the prizes. If Elder John comes out on top, in boomer fashion, we are going to the early bird special at Golden Corral, where we will certainly pay with exact change. And if I somehow win, on behalf of millennials around the world, John takes me to the finest microbrewery around that sells overpriced beers we all pretend to like. Now that we all know what's at stake, let's start the countdown. Can you give us a quick shop tour? I sure can. What you see is it. My miter station, my table saw, my outfeed table, and that's just about it. And what do you use for dust collection? It's uh, environmental. I'm actually um, somewhat of a selective connoisseur of pallets. And this project, which is going to be an outdoor coffee table, required a ritzy Euro pallet. So I searched around the expensive homes in the area to find the perfect specimen. Broken down the pallet, removed all the nails. We just check for square, or pretty square in the case of um, outdoor recreational table. And anything that needs to be straightened up, I can use this jig since I don't have a jointer. I need four two inch by two inch by 15 inch legs for this table. And I happened to find this at a building site decided that, you know, I think I can just cut quarters out of this and be done with it and won't have to glue up anything. Someone didn't watch the Don't Buy the Rio B Table Saw video. One two by two inch leg, one rabbit. You know, rabbits like to multiply. I started off with one rabbit, and now I ended up with four. One of the keys to pallet wood, even the ritzy stuff, is to make it appear more artistic. So, I'm cutting a chamfer on these legs. This is one of the runners from the pallet, and you can see that it has a kind of a built-in decorative feature that keeps me from having to do anything. So all that's left is to cross cut these to size. They're going to be used as apron pieces and I will assemble it all together with pocket screws. And here we have a base of a coffee table. All right, I am officially on the clock, which means I'm already behind. Those chairs I mentioned earlier are in desperate need of a side table, and I really like the dramatic angles of the legs. So I used that as inspiration when I was modeling this in SketchUp. It's a pretty funky design, and it would be quite challenging under normal circumstances, but you throw in a two-day deadline and I am panicking. Thankfully, unlike neighbor John, I do have a lot of toys at my disposal to speed this up and overcome my major deficiencies in woodworking. All the parts have some form of a taper or miter on them, which makes it all appear quite challenging. And I'm not going to say that it's easy, but with a trusty sled, stop blocks, and dumb luck, this should all come together. The big question mark is going to be the long bevel along the back leg that splays these two pieces outward. But that's tomorrow John's problem. If you want to see a process like this covered in more detail and why this match fit sled makes quick work of these parts, Check out said chair video because I get foreign to the weeds and provide better step-by-step -step instructions. All right, that took a lot longer than I budgeted for. Not surprising, but the base pieces are all set. 
And to try and make up for lost time, let's cut traditional woodworking corners here and use the domino to get these fastened together. It might seem like I'm overhyping this time crunch, but when you see the patterned top later, it will all make more sense. So this is either the dumbest thing I've either done or it's actually pretty brilliant. I just don't have time to fuss with clamps and getting angled blocks on there right now. So my thought is, what if I just use CA glue and activator and I'll hold them together while the activator sets in for 10 seconds. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. These joints were cut really well. And then we should be able to motor along or this completely blows up in my face. We'll find out. I need a sub base to attach the ultimate top surface of this table. So I'm using and cutting down some old fence pickets. I made a um, crosscut sled, but I only had one miter slot, which really wouldn't provide enough lateral stability. I just decided to create my own miter slot along the edge of this. That's one of the challenging aspects of working with cheaper tools. I need to get creative from time to time. I have to find solutions that I don't typically see on YouTube. The top pattern for this table is something that I have not attempted before. And it's very geometric and requires um, a fair amount of precision that has not been necessary up until now. So I made a life-size template that will keep me organized and the plan is to cut all these pieces slightly longer and then I can trim off the excess later. While John performs some questionable cuts that OSHA might not love, I can let you know about the new Jackery SG2000 Plus, which we've been using all morning to power these tools. No extension cords needed. Pretty cool. This thing has an absolutely crazy capacity of 2000 watt hours of power. For reference, we ran the table saw, miter saw, circular saw, and sander for eight hours and only used 20% of the battery. It even has a nice little handle to roll it around, which I greatly appreciate. I was asked at a conference recently if I truly use the Jackery, and the resounding answer is yes, all of the time off camera. They are so convenient for everything from powering a fan in our backyard at dinner to when we go tailgating with our friends. There's a nice mix of DC and AC power outlets so you can power anything from an iPhone to a refrigerator. And the best thing is you can stack up to five of these battery packs and each one adds an additional 2,000 watt hours. If you're a big time camper like John, you can even use the optional solar panels to charge these and it is whisper quiet. So be sure to take advantage of their Prime Day sales that end July 20th for up to 44% off and thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video. I meant to ask earlier when you were doing pocket holes, but are you at all worried about wood movement and this thing breaking? Well. Actually, all this wood has lived its life outside. So I think it's probably pretty well settled down. And I actually don't think I'll live long enough to have to worry about it. Does that answer your question? Okay, now that I've um, cut the, uh, the top to fit, I'm going to put an edge banding around the table which will conceal both the sub top area as well as the, the boards that I put down for the decorative top. This is one of the aspects of lack of precision and using materials that are not uniform. And that is that it takes a good deal of rough sanding in order to plane it down to a, a manageable level. It, in other words, these sanders cover up a lot of sins. There are plenty of geometric patterns that the cutting board enthusiasts love to show off at craft shows. And up until last week, I was going to do a bunch of hexagons, but upon further review, it felt a little too, I don't know, Pinterest for this design? So I opted for something that looked a little classier and ended up with this triangular diamond thing that will eventually be cut into a circle. 
Here is the hang up. Even though this table is only 18 inches, it requires over 65 individual pieces. I tested this out on the table saw, but I didn't love the speed or the results. So the miter saw it is. A simple stop block helps keep the workpiece from flying around. And all that's left to do is condense an hour of misery into this quick montage. Sadly, the misery montage isn't done yet because I need to break the edges of all these pieces on three sides. I truly don't know why I do these things to myself. I think it's a woodworker thing to torture ourselves but convince everyone else that we're actually having fun, even though we're not. Thankfully, my buddy Suman gave me an idea to tape a 45 degree scrap to my block plane. Despite my overblown theatrics, it made quick work of this and it gave me a nice consistent reveal on all of the pieces. Just be mindful of not slicing off your finger. I have no idea if this video will tank because it's so unlike anything I've done before. Regardless, it'll be one of my favorites because John has not just been a neighbor but an amazing friend for eight years. I can confidently say I wouldn't be a woodworker without him because he generously let me borrow that miter saw you've seen in action and that got me hooked. So I thought I could use this as an opportunity to give him something and as fate would have it, I was dealt the perfect hand. And I assure you, everything you're about to hear is not sponsored and 100% the truth. As fate would have it, in the middle of filming, a gas generator was delivered that he's planning on using for the camper you might have seen in the backdrop. This one. But I know he prefers the idea of electric, and he made not one, but multiple comments about how impressed he was with the performance of the Jackery, which is very unlike him. I can't tell you how many times I've offered to let him use anything in my shop, and he just won't. So I think I'll surprise him with the new Jackery at the end of the video, and he can return the gas generator. Hopefully he likes it. Hey, oh God. That sucked. Oh, sorry. That sucked. That was a really dumb idea. Good night. It's officially time for tomorrow John's problem. And to recap, these two base pieces need a long bevel to splay them outwards. Trying to do that up against the fence and feeding the pieces through is asking for trouble. So I whipped together this sliding bevel jig, which should take all the sketchiness out of said cut and make it much more accurate. Also, by the way, my hand clamps worked like a dream. I know it's probably been done before since most of us have two hands, but let's pretend like it hasn't and I invented a completely new technique. to say we're making up time here now i can just glue these together if you're wondering if this needs to be reinforced this is all long grain long grain so this is about as strong as it gets we'll just use a couple spring clamps to hold it in place with some tape while the glue dries so while the base dries up i can focus on the top i'm going to cut a circle out of the pattern that i made last night hold on a second I promise this is not staged. I think John's done sanding. I can hear from here. His sander just went off. Let's go check on him. Oh, God, crashing. All right. Looks like you're done sanding. I am. And it looks pretty good. You know, I had to stop and not make it look like it came from TJ Maxx. <laughs> So you ready for finish then? I'm ready. All right, coming over. All right, so for the folks at home, what are you using to finish this with? Well, I happen to have some tongue oil. And you know, since it's an heirloom piece, I want it to outlive me. Well, you finished with plenty of time to spare. Nicely done. How are you feeling about your chances? The only way that I'm going to beat John is if he doesn't finish his project on time. I'm going to be honest, John. I really don't want to go to the Golden Corral, so I'm going to get back to it. Yep. And we are back to cutting that circle. I have to tell you, this build took a lot out of me. I mean, I'm a pretty slow builder to begin with, and you throw in having to move the camera around, and generally that doubles your working time. This table would have pushed well over seven days under normal circumstances, 
But one of my new favorite things about working on this channel full time is the opportunity to experiment and try new video styles and challenges. So thanks again to all of you for watching, supporting and making this possible. Maybe this was also a great lesson that I don't need to spend hours lamenting every minor decision about a build. And it's best to just go for it whenever possible. And now it's time for my new favorite segment, Lincoln Street Honest Tea. This looks like crap. I just don't like the end grain to edge grain. I have a little bit of tear out over here. I know this video is all about trying to get something done in two days, but I'm not going to sacrifice making a crappy piece of furniture for that, especially something that I have to look at every day of my life and that would haunt me. So my plan is to try and rip a really thin strip of sapili to act as an edge banding of sorts. I've never done that on a circle, but theoretically this shouldn't be easy. I don't know. This is all about trying new things. I warned you earlier that I have a shop full of tools and I wasn't afraid to use them. Case in point, the drum sander even got its bi-monthly workout in. Also, a big shout out to my wife who always shows up to film glue ups. And nine times out of 10, something goes horribly wrong. But I am thrilled to report this was not one of those times. I mean, she was due. You earned this one, Jess. Well done for not being bad luck. While that sets up for a couple hours, I can do my final prep work for the base. Mount these figure eight fasteners, mow the lawn, put the kids to bed, sand the top, which looks so much better with this edge banding. Thank God for that honesty. And then this happened. Do you see this face? Take a look at it. It's the face of a man that just grinded for two days to get this build done. And I went to go apply finish and I'm out of teak oil. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday night. I can easily wait until tomorrow morning and fake it by wearing the same shirt but we're not in the business of faking it. To Home Depot we go. Heated gas. This is what my life has come to. I'm vlogging at a gas station at nine o'clock on a Saturday night. Living the dream, folks. Shocker, no one's here. Makeout session by the lawnmowers. God bless you, Home Depot, for being open until 10. Always park by the exit, never the entrance. All right, folks, that's two coats of teak oil, two days to build it. I'm done. Oh, thank God. It's time for you to let us know down in the comments if John's pallet wood pride earned him an exact change trip to the Golden Corral or my millennial mid-century midlife crisis table netted me overpriced beers that probably don't taste very good but I'll inevitably convince myself that I like them. Oh, and I have one more surprise. Hang tight. So I saw you had this gas generator delivered the other day, but figured this would do a much better job. So the Jackery is all yours. That's very generous. Well, enjoy. I, I don't really know what to say. Well, actually, I know what you can say. Hold on. Oh. That doesn't totally suck. See ya.